In this video, we'll have a look at while loops. Um, we already looked at for loops. With for loops, you can specify the number of times that a certain block of code will be executed, and a variable will run by different values of a list or a range function, or another iterator function. And uh, the, the while loop is different in the sense that the while loop will repeat a certain block of code as long as a certain condition, a logical test, is true. This means you could also make a, a similar functionality as a for loop with a while loop, because a for loop ends also at a certain condition, namely being the fact that a value, the, 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 run, the running variable, reaches a certain value. An example, if we have i set equal to 1, then we can say while i less than 10, print i and increase i plus 1. And then we can print i again after the while loop. So what will happen here? We will see that uh, i is set to 1. While i is less than 10, it will print and increase a value. Then as soon as it is 10, as it equals 10, it will skip this while loop and then it should print uh, the, the final value 10 of i. Let's run it. Missing parameters. Oh, the print, of course, I used the old Python 2 syntax there, right, uh, like this. And there also. Run. And we see indeed the while loop being repeated for 1 to 9, as long as i is less than 10, and then it ends when it is 10. But of course, in this case, uh, a for loop would be more convenient. But it, the while loop has a, is more versatile. You can do different things with it. For instance, imagine that we want to simulate uh, the falling of a, of a uh, uh, ball. Um, we start off with, in, with an altitude of 10 meters and a speed of 0 meter per second. Uh, we have a constant acceleration of 9.81 meter per second squared. These uh, units are just uh, as added as comments after the hashtag. It's a comment ignored by Python, but it's to make the code more readable and to show the units of this for somebody who tries to understand the code. Um, the, we have the time, the time step, and we can also add here altitude vertical speed positive up. And then we have the acceleration. If we have positive up, then the acceleration should be negative. So uh, vertical acceleration. And then we have here the time and the time step. And with a while loop, we can now say that we want to run the simulation as long as the ball has not hit the ground yet. So the y is larger than zero. And then we can, uh, inside this while loop, make an, 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 an the, the actual the ball move. So we first have the speed, which will change by g times the time step and y will change by the speed times the time step and so here we say for each time step dt we calculate the change of the speed and the change of the position and we also update the time Now, we, we uh, can be, in this simple case, be pretty sure that indeed it will start falling down if I've done everything correctly with the signs. 
but to make sure that uh, things run, it's always better to be safe that the program will not get in an endless loop. Because that's what can happen with a while loop, that if inside this loop the, the, the con nothing is done that will ever make this condition false, then you have made an endless loop and basically your program is then stuck. So you have to always have to check that with a while loop. And there are two things that you have to check. Often you want to at least enter it, that it, it's being executed once. So check whether it will be entered, will it will be true. And uh, the so check the starting condition. And the other check is that check that it will always reach the end condition. In this case, for instance, it wouldn't hurt to say that we also want t to be less than 100, because if it hasn't hit the ground yet after 100 seconds, probably something is wrong, and then it will still end. And when it has completed its fall, we can print uh, time. We can print speed. And then we can see whether our while loop works as planned. Let's also make sure that we print the altitude. So we have here a condition that this total condition is, is a logical, which basically checks whether i is larger than zero and the time still being less than zero. That uh, that is the condition that has to be true. Both of them have to be true. That's why we use the end. And in other ways, you could also say it should stop when either of these is no longer true. So you can also do it like this. Uh, when not, and then we can use the end condition and say, well, as soon as it's larger than 100 seconds, or we have hit the ground, then we should stop it. So only execute when this ending condition is not true and that is basically with while not you make it a sort of uh, repeat until so in this case either it will be stopped by hitting the ground or by the clock running for 100 seconds and uh, then we did something wrong let's see if it works and we see that indeed at some point it reaches the minus 0 0.3 meter so in the ground because one time step before it was apparently still above the ground and then uh, the speed, and we see also how much time it took to hit the ground. And if we want to be this to be more precise, we should have used a smaller time step. And then we get it closer to the ground and we get a more accurate estimate of actually the time that it will take to hit the ground. And we see that it's actually 1.42 something seconds. And the speed is minus 40 meter per second. And now we get a more closer estimate of the uh, of the hitting of the ground. Um, let's see. This is a slightly larger speed than here because it is updated one more time. Yeah. Okay. So this is a simple example of a while loop. There are much more things that you can do with the while loop. You can look for in a list for certain conditions. You can uh, start collecting indices of, of uh, while loops. You can combine while and for loops. You can check for certain numeric conditions. And in, uh, in another video, we'll have an, a look at what you can do with these two loops, the while loop and the for loop, and how you can use them.